Hi, Kristen. Um, it's Molly from The Times, as, as Hayley said. Sorry, yeah. Um, I just want to know really um, why you've come to Manchester United and whether it's something that you kind of thought about before the pandemic or, or whether it's something that um, was sort of a fairly last minute decision, really. Yeah, I decided to play for Manchester United because... Um, they offered an amazing chance for me to get back to football after having been away for six months, uh, which is the longest stretch of time of my life that I, that I haven't played. Um, so I, I had not been considering coming to Europe, um, you know, early this year. And um, I think, you know, a lot of sites were towards the Olympics this summer. And in March, when, you know, football shut down in the United States, um, and, and for, for myself, um, kind of all bets were off and, and no one knew what to expect. And um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a, you know, six months of thinking, you know, what am I going to do is sort of just living day to day, trying to figure out how I was going to get to a field the next day. And and then when I found out that Manchester United was interested in signing myself, um, myself and Tobin, I, I jumped at the opportunity uh, to play for a great club, um, a massive club with such history, um, to play for a team that's going to have an opportunity to fight for titles um, and to play for a manager that's really well respected. And I know you haven't been here too long in terms of actually getting on the pitch because of quarantine, but um, how, how has that period been and, and how have you had a, had a chance to get to know some of your new, new teammates, maybe virtually? Yeah, I, I am pretty easy about things like this. Everyone keeps asking about how the quarantine went and thinking it was terrible, but essentially I was in quarantine for six months because we were sheltering in place in, in Portland in the United States. Um, and I think in, you know, in an ideal world, of course, you would get to come and jump right in, but there were a ton of advantages for having this period of time um, to be able to emotionally adjust and prepare um, to be able to, to eat English food and get used to it, to sleep on the time zone. And I actually felt like going into my first training session, which was a few days ago, um, that I was much more prepared than I would have been if I had got off the flight the day before. So, um, you know, it, it's a, it was a blessing in disguise and um, was able to talk to a lot of staff, a lot of players, um, you know, during quarantine virtually, and then met just a small group of players um, over the weekend um, that are still here and not on, on international duty. So it's been a great and slow transition. And I think just for my personality, it's actually been really helpful um, and, and not as overwhelming as a traditional move would be. Thank you. I'll let someone else jump in now. Uh, Luke Edwards. Right, I've unmuted myself, finally remembered how to do this. Um, hi, Kristen, nice to meet you. Um, is this the first time you've played for a club that is globally famous in Manchester United? And, and what does that mean for you personally? Yeah, I think, you know, the history um, that goes into putting on this crest is something that I've never experienced. It's something that, you know, no club has in the United States and um, and even the other international teams I play for don't have this type of rich history of football. Um, so it's a huge honor. In a lot of ways, it feels surreal. Um, I actually, I came to Manchester when I was 13 years old. Um, when I was playing for like a local team, we came over and played Manchester United's, you know, development girls team. Um, and it was the first time I experienced the EPL and, um, you know, English football and, you know, I was blown away. So to be back here, some decades later um, and, and to be playing, it, it's an amazing opportunity and I, I hope that I can absorb as much of the football culture and the football magic that's here as possible. And obviously the, the men's game over here has been well established for a long, long time, you know, 100, 100 years, but the, the women's game is really progressing now. What is the view of the WSL stateside at the moment? We're very excited about you coming here, but it's not just yourself, there's, there's a lot of international stars coming. Is its reputation really soaring now? Yeah, I think the reputation is, is, is absolutely growing and it has been uh, for a while. I think, you know, from 
you know, the vantage point of the global game. It's a league that's starting to invest on the women's side. And obviously if, you know, if this country decides to invest on the women's side, uh, they have more resources than, you know, than most. So there's a huge opportunity there. Um, and at this point, you have a lot of the best players in the world already here. Um, and so that makes, you know, competition great. I think it's going to be a league where there's not as many easy games as a lot of other European leagues. And, and that's something that players want to play in leagues where it's hard to win. Um, and I think, you know, also there's several top teams so, you know, fighting for the Champions League spot, fighting for the cup titles, fighting for the league, it's going to be challenging every step of the way. And that's exactly what you want as a player. You want the opportunity to win. You want to fight. You want to play for, for top clubs, but you also want fierce competition and you want to be playing with and against the best. Thank you very much. Good luck.